welcome the students of class 8 welcome again in our social science history class and students today in this class we are going to discuss the rest of the portion of your history chapter 7 in your old book and those have new NCRT book they can open page number uh, chapter number 6 in your new NCRT book and it is in page number 85. So today's topic it is the who were the weavers. So in previous classes we have read that how Indian textiles were very much accepted and very much popular in European markets. So that's why all the time the European traders they try to try to uh, overcome the Indian goods and they try to impose and some new rules and regulations on to restrict the entry of Indian textiles or in European markets. So what happened after that? So who were the weavers who wove this wonderful, wonderfully decorated Indian textiles? That weavers often belong to the communities that specialized in weaving for generations. Okay. So generation after generation, the exquisite designs the, and all the skills they acquired, they passed to their son and daughters and their descendants. So in Bengal, this community is called Tati. And in UP, it is called Julaha or Momin. Not only UP, all over the all, northern India. Julaha or Momin in North India. And in South India, they are called Saliar or Kaikolar. So Saliar or Kaikolar in South India. So these are some communities or group of weavers. Those are very much famous at the time for their weaving skills. So the first stage, so what are the different stages of weaving? The first stage of weaving, it was the spinning of the thread, okay, from the cotton making the thread. And the spinning is the first part, it is mostly done by the women. They actually collect the cotton and from the cotton, they used to spin the cotton in a spindle. It is in uh, Hindi, it is called takli, okay, takli or spindle. And also they used charkha and uh, these two instruments were used to spin the thread. And they now, these two household spinning instrument used drastically to make thread and after that when the spinning is over the thread was woven into cloth okay the thread was woven into cloth by hand loom and after the cloth is prepared then it was dyed by some specialist dyers known as rang rays they are specialist dyers specialist dyers who dyed the cloths okay they are called rang rays okay so for, uh, so after that, some of the, some of the cloths, they used to print. And for printing the cloth, specialist block painters or chip figures are present, okay. So specialist block painters who make beautiful designs or print, okay. 
these designs are not made with the okay with the needle and thread they used uh, they actually print this so specialist printers community they are called chippigars okay so these are some communities those are uh, joint in with the weaving industry okay and handloom weaving and occupations related in this was livelihood of many billions of indians at that time millions of indians involved like th this type of communities involved in weaving industry indian weaving industry and in this industry is one type of in as per the today's point of view it is a cottage industry okay so now what happened after that and how did the indian cotton textile industries and the weavers condition started deteriorating how did the decline cotton industry declined okay cotton textile industry declined we will discuss this sub unit now so after industrial industrial revolution in britain okay so i am dropping this one so after industrial revolution what happened that the foreign made the britain made textiles and cheap uh, they became very much cheap because the labor cost cost was uh, not there because very few laborers needed to run those machines because industrial revolution you have already read that how did different different machines run by the steam engines okay so these are these machines can produce thousands of clothes within one day and with very few laborers okay so this cheap so those textiles become very much cheap in compare with the indian textiles those are handmade totally and hand woven so this cheap rated british textiles in europe uh, the totally flooded in europe and american markets and exporting textiles also difficult at the time because of very high duties were imposed on indian textiles and to protect this type of industries the british government they imposed heavy duty on indian hand woven textiles so it was very much difficult for the indian uh, textile exporters to export those textiles in european markets and by the beginning of the 19th century english made cotton textiles totally ousted or ejected indian textiles from america africa and european markets so thousands of people thousands of weavers in india those were involved in weaving industry they lost their job so lot of people they lost their job so by the beginning uh, so what happened after that in bengal foreign companies they also stopped buying indian goods and their agents the agents appointed by the european companies for the purchasing of indian textiles they also st stopped giving advances to the indian weavers so this is also a great danger for the indian weavers so distressed weavers wrote application or wrote petitions to the government for help to solve this 
problem, but it was not solved. But what happened in 1830s, British cotton cloth flooded Indian market. And by 1880s, two third of the people of India, they started wearing Indian, uh, they started wearing the Western or European textiles, mostly produced in Britain after industrial revolution. So the specialist weavers and the spinners, including many rural women, those are involved in spinning industry, they mainly wove the thread and mainly uh, made the thread by spinning it the cotton. So they also became jobless. Okay. But due to despite these type of problems, the handloom Indian handloom industry did not completely die. What are the reasons and from uh, and what are the places where this industry still exists? Now one by one we will see this things that you know that the Indian saris and the Indian some textiles have some intricate border and uh, traditional woven patterns such as in Bandni, in uh, Jamdani, in Batik, in, uh, and uh, in Patola. So these designs and the, also the chins, chicken curry, so these designs cannot be copied. Okay, so they cannot copy so it was not possible to copy these patterns. So they had a great demand among the upper and middle class Indian. Also the coarse cloth or coarse cotton that used by the poor people of India also very difficult to produce in machines. So some places in India such as Solapur in Maharashtra, Madurai in Tamil Nadu become new centers of weaving. And during national movement, Mahatma Gandhi also urged people to boycott the foreign made textiles and accept the hand woven and hand spun Indian textiles or Indian cloth. In this way, Khadi became the symbol of nationalism and also the charkha was, was used uh, in the middle of the tricolor that was first adopted by Indian National Congress as a symbol of national movement in 1931. So what happened to the jobless weavers and spinners? So this is the burning question, what happened with them? So number one, the jobless weavers and spinners, many become, many left their job and become agricultural laborer. So many became agricultural labor, many become agricultural labor or agri labor. Number two, some migrated to the cities for work. Migrated to cities for work. So you know that in towns and cities, at that time they are developing new, new, new cities established. So the machinery work or other works for other works, lot of labors needed. So they also joined those works in the cities. Number three, others went to the country, went to, went off, went out of the country. Means they was they were going abroad, 
in uh, search of work and joined the plantations in Africa and South America and West Indies. Okay, South America, West Indies, and also Africa. Number four, and some of them also joined with in the new cotton mills established at that time by some Indian entrepreneurs and Indian businessmen in Bombay, Ahmedabad, Sholapur, Nagpur, and Kanpur. And in this case, Ahmedabad is in Gujarat, you know, Bombay, Sholapur, and Nagpur in Maharashtra, and Kanpur in UP or Uttar Pradesh at the time, United Province. Okay. Now, the cotton mills come up. Okay, next subunit. So, I'll tell you that subunit next day. So, students, I think you have understood what are the reasons of the decline of Indian textile industry and how did the Indian industry again they turn back and what happened with the jobless weavers and spinners. So thank you for watching, see you in the next class.